Welcome to the Lions series of webinars giving you a crash course in the main road safety key risk areas. This is the first course and the rationale behind the Alliance Risk Area Crest course is to zoom in on ev evidence-based strategies that have proven to work in reducing fatalities and injuries on our roads. On this slide, you can see an outline of the course and today we will focus on motorcycle helmets. Well, who is better positioned to share best practices and main messages within these proven risk areas than the Alliance members? In this course, we have invited Na Hung, who is Deputy Chief Executive Officer at AIP Foundation in Vietnam, and she'll give you, us an outline of why it is important to wear a motorcycle helmet, how a helmet works, and why some people do not wear it. Na Hung will also share a case study from Vietnam where AIP Foundation, along with a number of partners, have actively worked on changing behavior on child helmet wearing and thereby improved helmet wearing rates in Vietnam. But before I turn it over to Na Hung in Vietnam, I want to let you know that we have collected a number of resources for you to explore further. You can find them on our website, which is shown here. This is also where you put your questions or evaluate the webinars. But let's get started. Na Hung, a very welcome to you. Okay, good afternoon. Here is from Hanoi, Vietnam. My name is Na Hung. Um, I come from Vietnam and I'm the Deputy Chief Executive Officer of uh, AIP Foundation. Um, thank you for let us having an opportunity to share with you about our work here and um, under how much you. And today I would like to um, to talk about share with you all uh, an um, an example from Vietnam about helmet use. First, um, I will have a quick introduction about AIP Foundation. Then I will talk about the child's helmet use problem in Vietnam. Um, then the importance of um, wearing a proper helmets. And um, share with you the main reasons for not wearing helmets. And finally, I like to say a case study um, about the National Child Helmet Action Plan that we implemented in 2015. AIP Foundation is an uh, 501c3, um, an American NGO, and we operate in Vietnam and other Asia country like uh, Thailand, Cambodia, China, and we also have our activity in Africa, like Tanzania and um, Tanza Tanzania and Uganda. Um, we our mission is to provide life-saving road safety knowledge and skill to low and middle income countries, and the goal is to prevent road fatality and injury. And for our program, we focus on communication program, uh, communication program that is create public awareness campaign with poster, with banner, with TVC to, um, to change people's behavior in the fields of uh, helmet wearing. And our target um, uh, group is children at primary school where we implement a lot of education projects such as Helmet for Kids, Walk This Way, and also PAC, Public Awareness Campaign. Um, and we carry out global and legis legislative advocacy. We're working closely with, um, with governments to especially here in Vietnam, working with government to have them set up their helmet standard in 2001 and work with them in 2008 to revise the standard and this year 2015 to revise the standard again. And we have, uh, we're working on uh, research and monitoring and evaluation for X component, X projects that we are carrying out. Also people here using two wheel vehicle and a lot of chais um, um, go to school um, with their parents on uh, motorcycle without helmet. So 
I'd like to talk about focus on children, Vietnamese children. Um, as they, um, you know, 90% of um, Vietnamese people using motorcycle. And um, it becomes as the family's vehicle. Then 75.8% of road crosses in Vietnam related to motorcycles. So that's a huge number. The Chai Helmet Law only passed in 2010, but in reality, the Chai Helmet is still very low. I will talk later about why it is low and why, why child, parents don't put a helmet on their child in the next slide. But, um, mm, you know, look at, at the video or the picture, you will see both uh, adults having helmet on their motorcycle, but not the two children. Next slide, please. Um, the number I'm going to share with you is the number that we um, got updated in 2015. There are 22,404 road crosses happened in 2015, and there are 20,556 was injury, and 8,671 was um, dead. Um, and you know, 80% of um, fatal case was pedestrian, cyclists, and, and motorcyclists. Next slide. Um, then, for children, the system here doesn't have, like, doesn't have a, 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 um, an update on uh, this number for children. So, the number I am sharing with everybody today was in 2010 and collected by a hospital here in Vietnam. So there was 4,000 children die from motor vehicle accidents and more than 2,000 cases of um, very serious brain injury. Most of them are from 15 to 19 and about nearly 1,500 cases of um, um, serious brain injury for age 0 to 14. And we, from our research and our study for all the projects, we, we um, know that quality harmless can absolutely help to prevent these tragedies. That's why we create a, a vaccine and we think helmet is a vaccine. Because from the study, um, if you wear appropriate helmets and if you use properly, the helmet would help to reduce the risk of head injury by 69% and reduce the risk of fatality by 42%. Next, please. So, how does the helmet work? So, the helmet has function to reduce the risk of serious um, brain injury, and it also uh, reduces the risk of head concussion, reduce brain impact, and reduce impact between the school and the brain. Um, inside the helmet, that is an, a main part, is EPA, and it it's have function to have uh, absorb the impact when the, um, when the accident happened. Because basically, it will reduce the pressure on specific part of the, the on the school, um, and also the helmet prevent a trauma between the brain and the school. Next slide, please. Um, you know, most of you, if you're living in um, Europe or America or even some some country in, in the region here, like Philippines, you in um, or India, um, the full face helmet would look uh, very familiar to you because um, most of those country follows Europeans or Americans standards and um, the motorcyclists often drive with a very high speed, uh, so they often use the kind of helmet that cover the whole face. 
But here in Vietnam, as a tropical country, people prefer to have a half helmet. We have this um, uh, this demonstration to uh, to share with you that um, the of course the full face helmet will have 100% protection, while the half helmet only have 60% 60% protection. However, with um, with the facts of um, hot and humid weather uh, together with um, middle and low income, people can't afford a full face helmet with a price of one or two hundred dollars. So um, most of people here wear half helmet and the price go from um, seven to twenty dollar per helmet. But the reality is half helmet only protects sixty five percent of of the, the brain compared with a full face helmet. So now Next, please. Could, could you explain? Sorry, yeah. Could you explain these numbers here that are on this uh, slide, on the on the helmet? So here they measure um, they measure the percentage of protection of each part of the helmet. Okay. So they draw they draw on a full face helmet and they you know they have they show the protection uh, percentage of those parts and there is a math that um, um, if the helmet only cover head and ear is only you know at sixty five percent compared with this full helmet to reflect the you know the reality of helmet model they are using in Vietnam. So as because we have a helmet uh, subsidized by ourselves, so we um, the the helmet on this picture was designed and produced by Portex. So the helmet have three uh, important parts. The first part is the outer cell. Um, the outer cells, you know, mostly have the the function to displace the force of impact over the area cover and it reduces the impacts of head, um, also protects the, the helmet uh, in, and the, you know, protects the EPS liner inside. We also have, you will have a question because you, ha you are familiar with the helmet for bicyclists. Uh, the cells is only a very thin cover um, of PVC material. But for those helmets, they have very thick EPA. So the, the outer cell of those bicycling helmets only have the decoration uh, function. Uh, but here, for this type of helmet, the outer cell made by ABS, a very uh, and, uh, uh, harder than the other and thicker than the PVC. And the EPA liner inside, um, Make from a styrofoam, and it uh, it plays as the most important part of the helmet because it has absorbed the the impact if accident happen. Then we have the strap. The strap help keep the helmet in the place during the impact. So if we fall right, left, front, or back, the helmet should remain in the same position on our head. Um, a lot of you know, Vietnamese, you know, they wear the helmet without buckling it. That's why in the law, government also give um, the the part that if you wear helmet without uh, buckling, is you will get a penalty. Um, just another part, you know, it's just, it's more for decoration and protecting. Um, give us a comfortable part is the the um, comfort pad inside. Uh, it's just made from you know, fabric and have the helmet fit and have a feel comfortable. Um, we often um, recommend people to change the helmet every three years or immediately after having the first impact. Um, so I have said the chai helmet um, wearing is very low in Vietnam. So what is the reason? We have carried out a couple of public awareness campaigns 
And um, during those campaigns with a lot of um, activity, we also carry out an uh, evaluation, M&E. And, &E. and we, uh, we found out the most common myth about child helmets use in Vietnam is, you know, parent thinks accidents don't happen on such a short trip. So I won't put helmet on my child. Uh, I am such a wonderful and skilled driver, so I mm, accident won't happen to me. Uh, it takes too long to put a helmet on my child. Uh, helmet for child are very expensive, and I'm not sure about the quality of those those products. So we think that you know the the reason is. First of all, parents doesn't understand the importance of, of a helmet for their children, and they, they are not prioritized. Um, and from government, uh, from, and people also have a very limited awareness on the importance of um, using helmet properly. Um, and on the side of um, governments, they don't provide enough of, uh, monitoring evaluation on their own system. Even the law are already there, but the enforcement is very, very low. Um, and uh, there are a lot of arguments amongst ministry here to, to decide who will, be, who will in charge of helmet law enforcement, and until now, they still haven't worked out. So the helmet use laws not really strictly enforced by the traffic police. Um, and besides, you know, a lot of um, organization or even government body working on road safety education, but um, it's still not a priority public health action in in some area like school or uh, in in the local among local authorities. Next slide, please. And now I would like to um, share with you a um, case study from Vietnam, um, the National Child Helmet Action Plan that we um, implement in Vietnam in 2015. Um, this is an um, integrated campaign uh, with the objective of in, uh, increasing child helmet wearing rate. So we um, we combine a um, couple activity on this component. So we create a public-private partnership um, for for the sustainability objective. Then we create a communication and education campaign. We're using mass media, direct communication, and. Uh, we take advantage of online social networks as Facebook has so much impact um, and influence on people now. Um, and we also encourage uh, how many manufacturing to join us um, to um, give support for helmet um, purchasing for children at primary school. And we bring uh, traffic police on boss to um, to to work on the enforcement and the um, and finally is uh, the the last part is we um, we want we want to come in and train people the way they should do and when the project's finished uh, they they know how to organize a public awareness campaign also work with other partner to create uh, to increase the child helmet wearing. So we do capacity building to uh, at provincial level. Then um, I would like to show you the um, the model. So AIP um, work with the UN agency like WHO, UNICEF. We work with the uh, CDC to support it on the um, you know, monitoring and evaluation. And we call for donation from philanthropy, corporate sponsor, and other NGO like uh, we have Johnson and Johnson, the UPA Foundation, ABAS, um, 
as a corporate sponsor. And we have GISP, we have FIA Foundation as other NGO to support us. And we also call hel other helmet manufacturer to um, join this, this campaign. Um, with government, we, um, we are working with um, the National Traffic Safety Committee is the, the, main, um, the main government agency to work with all the NGO on, on all the, all the matter. And for road safety, we've been collaborating and with them for 15 years since we start here in Vietnam. And follow with NTSC, we work with other relevant um, government agencies such as MOET, Ministry of Education and Training for all the activity at school. We're working with uh, ministry, um, other ministry like, uh, you know, Ministry of Health, Ministry of Labor and, and Social, uh, you know, Vietnam fa Fatherlands Front. And go down to um, provincial authority. Under NTSC, National Traffic Safety Committee, they have their um, provincial traffic safety committee. So we work when we work with X province, we um, they are the key contact. Um, then we work with local community and school and hospital. There are a lot of local community here in um, in Vietnam, like youth union with young people, uh, women's association. With those groups, they, they could um, send the message or uh, use all the material for their own uh, network. Next one, please. So the, um, the public-private partnership model, I think it, it, it is popular everywhere and it, it proves the effectiveness, uh, it proves the, um, the importance when we can uh, working together and, and, you know, decide who do what and build capacity from which level. Um, so, with, you know, the public-private partnership model help to enhance national political win and motivation and um, that's that you know we have for the global road safety week the theme for 2015 um, was children and road safety so people already have a separate subjects for focus on children um, for national, um, for national level, it has to promote the competition among provinces. Um, when we work with different provinces, we give, we share with them the material, we share with them how to handle that, and they will implement it by themselves, and we follow with the monitoring to measure uh, the helmet wearing rate of those provinces. Um, then it, it shows that uh, building capacity for those provincial level have um, helped them a lot when they actually implement the, the activity by themselves. Um, police enforcement. We know that in, in, a, in a, if we create a public awareness campaign, we also need education. And with education, we from there, government will see, will see a, a fact and finger to create a law. And after the, after the law, everything will not be success without police enforcement. And in our campaign, we have um, police on bus and they uh, implement couple, um, you know, they decide the time for their campaign. And we measure it before the enforcement and after the enforcement to, to see the, the difference of the helmet wearing rate. Um, so, the, at, um, at public area, the, the key message will be, um, you know, if you love the children, you put a helmet on them. And we also have strong message to, um, um, 
for parent and teacher for for police. From there, they win they win transfer to to the kids at, at the school and to the kid um, that they will stop the for example the police gonna stop and remind their parent and themselves. Um, and and you know we create a, a very safety you know kind of safety culture in, in school um, by creating a school manual from from uh, experts from uh, Ministry of Education and Training and uh, traffic police and teacher from school. For that uh, manual, we uh, collect um, people who have uh, experience from different level. So we make sure that manual will fit with students and they are interested in looking at those um, paper or image. And also, teachers have their way to transfer the knowledge to students. And from those activity, uh, next slide, please. From those activity, we um, carry out some um, uh, monitoring and evaluation. So um, this number was um, measured from March 2014 to Dece December 2015. So you see on the chart in um, in Hanoi the helmet wearing rate start 23.2 and go up to 68.8, then back down go down to 37.1 by the end of the campaign. So why it can go up to 68.8? Because during that period we um, we implement a huge enforcement campaign by. April 2015. That's why you see same with other city, Da Nang and Ho Chi Minh. For April area, the helmet wearing red go up. You know, for Da Nang is from 37.1 to 75.4, and from Ho Chi Minh 48.4 to 67.6. Um, but they can't keep at the same level after. Um, after the enforcement campaign um, stop. Um, the next slide. The next slide is we um, we collect the um, the train in China how much use in twelve other provinces where we have the capacity building and some other activity in those city. Um, most of the city the um, helmet wearing is going up um, from April to December. However, there are two cities, um, the helmet wearing is going down. Um, Lotte is very disappointed because one of those cities is Harting where we uh, have implemented J&J &J helmet for kids for three, for three years. You was part of that. Yeah. Um, but uh, they, you know, they just make a couple excuses, like because uh, December is winter, so it's very cold in central Vietnam. Kids lazy on putting a helmet on. But um, but we see other number how uh, to see um, if you really build their capacity and teach them how to implement a, a campaign properly together with education and police enforcement, uh, there will be an increase on, on helmet use. Um, that's, the, that's our number for, you know, for the um, National Action Plan for 2015. So we still see um, a lot of challenges there. Um, we see that we find that government capacity is um, is limited in implementing the program. Um, they don't have enough skill. They don't have human resources. They don't. They can't go find funding by themselves, and um, they don't have enough time to allocate for other things besides their current responsibility. Um, and for and for us, it is hard to uh, get enough funds for to cover all um, province um, for for long time to have uh, sustain the child helmet use on national level. 
Um, and um, when the campaign uh, implement and we start with different uh, timeline uh, across intervention program that also um, reduce the effectiveness of, of the, the national campaign. So that's, that's, um, that's, that's all about our, um, our sharing today on, uh, on how much wearing situation in Vietnam, how much ill situation in Vietnam. And um, uh, because AIP Foundation focus, all the projects focus on um, children at primary school, that's why we, um, we provide a lot of information on the child's helmet wearing. Um, and the reason we focus on uh, children is because we think when you, um, when you create a safety culture for the children and they will grow up with and it becomes their habit. So, you know, their, their behavior has been changed from very young age. Thank you so much for the uh, opportunity. I hope it um, is hard to, uh, to give you an imagination about what's going on in Vietnam, what's about the helmet use in Vietnam, and uh, how people using driving uh, motorcycle in Vietnam. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much, Nahung. This was re very informative, and I think uh, just just seeing all the efforts and 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 work you have put into me really making a change, but there's still challenges. I think that's that's uh, that's good to know that uh, things take time, and uh, but it's uh, you you can do something. Thank you very much, Nahung. Uh, this webinar is ava available online, and you can go back and listen to it as many times as you like. Should you wish to learn more, we have collected a number of resources which can be found on our website. You can also reach out to ARP Foundation and Nahum directly. Overall, I encourage you to use the excellent expertise you can find in our group. Thank you for listening and have a safe day.